Today I'm creating a banger 3D design in Adobe Illustrator in 360 seconds or less. Enjoy the video. first thing I'm doing in Illustrator is using the T tool, the type tool, whatever you want to call it to type out some text. The font that I'm working with today is called Tradesmith. I talked about this in my last video and I even added a download link so you guys can go download this font if you would like to. It's completely free. But uh, the next thing I need to do is actually go to effect, add something called a flag warp and just kind of mess with the parameters until I get something that looks like this. And now we're going to be working with some 3D space. Okay. So we're going to go to effect 3D and I'm just doing a quick extrude and bevel. Don't overthink this part, just play around with the parameters until you're happy with what you see. And then go up to object, expand appearance, and then we're gonna copy just the front face, okay? We're gonna separate that from the back shadow part, and we're going to merge all that together using the Pathfinder options. After expanding the shadow layer and merging everything together using the Pathfinder merge option, what I wanna do now is actually paste the front face back in, shift command V to do that on a Mac, and I'm just selecting the entire front face first and I'm going to change this to a black color, a darker color. And then we want to turn the background into a stroke. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to see where the imperfections are and I'm going to end up deleting those imperfections as you can see right here. So this part is a little complicated at first, but just know that I'm just cleaning up the lines. Another pro tip is duplicate everything at least once. So you have a master copy. That's what I'm doing right here. Another thing that's really important is I want to make sure the stroke is aligned to the inside, not the center or the outside. If you have it aligned to the outside or the center or anything like that, it's just not going to look right. So make sure you align it to the inside. Now it's time to delete the lines that I don't want. Basically, deleting strokes that I don't need. Um, as you can see, some of them are kind of peeking out from the front face and I don't want that. So I'm only keeping the top left, basically the outermost stroke I'm keeping. Everything on the inside is going away. I'm deleting that using the scissor tool. Um, the scissor tool is awesome. You can literally just cut strokes with it. Really, really helpful. I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you haven't used it yet. But this part's a little boring, so I'm gonna speed it up. But just know that I'm just cleaning up the inside so I can keep the outside. And at the end, this will all come together, I promise. Okay, so it's all cleaned up. Now I just need to turn the front face into a stroke as well, matching the same stroke width as my uh, other stroke. And then I could just start using the pen tool to start adding my own lines in order to kind of match the 3D that's on the original that you see at the bottom there that's in red. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out where these lines should meet. And it's kind of just using common sense, right? I'm, I'm literally eyeing it figuring out where things are crossing and meeting and all that stuff, where they should join. Um, and in a second, you're gonna see me actually joining my created lines with the lines that are on the front face and the backstroke that I just cleaned up. I know this is probably confusing, but just bear with me. Once I add my own line work to the front face, which is the letters, then I can start joining them together, which will make more sense in a second. But essentially, like when you try to snap these paths together, the corners are not gonna look right. They're just not. So what you have to do is actually use a scissor tool to cut the corners and then rejoin them, um, rejoin the paths. I know that's probably confusing, but like right here, for instance, what I did with that D was I rejoined those paths together, which uh, completes the entire path. What you're gonna see me do a lot is use something called the wireframe mode. And this allows me to kind of see the skeleton of my strokes. And this allows you to really precisely make sure they are all aligned. And to activate that mode, you just use command Y or I think it's control Y on a PC and you want to use that mode a lot when you're doing these kind of designs because that's the only way you can really make sure you're being precise but again I'm doing a lot of cutting and joining of paths in order to make all of the corners of the letters look smooth to join the path together you could do it a few different ways but what I do is I use the join tool which is right under the pencil tool in the same exact menu and this tool is really really helpful for joining paths really quick and as soon as you join the path you will see the corners just clean up right away what I'm doing is basically cutting out the middle and then moving it over and then using the join tool. And you can also enter wireframe mode and make sure your points are connected. But once you use that join tool, you'll see the corner sharpen up again and that's what you wanna see. So that's how you know it's successfully joined together. And then you just wanna snap that middle back in place and then this is what it looks like. So you just wanna do that for every single corner until you cover the entire design and you're pretty much done after that. And then if you want, you could change the stroke points uh, to make the strokes thicker or thinner. It's up to you. I'm pretty much done 
done, all I have to do now is enter wireframe mode and double check all of the corners, which is what I'm doing right now. Some of them are not snapped together. And it's also important to note that you don't always have to cut the corners, like on these parts right here, you don't have to cut the corners and join them if they don't need it. You only have to do that if they need it, like if a part's sticking out or it doesn't look natural. So um, anyway, just cleaning up everything and we're pretty much done. Right here I'm actually just taking the front face letters from the other design that I had a duplicate copy of and I'm going to copy that and then paste it on my design and put it behind everything just so I can create a solid fill version so I have two versions to choose from if I would like to but uh, I actually prefer the outlined version more I don't know about you guys but let me know in the comment section and to create the little twinkle stars whatever you want to call them I just use triangles duplicated it a bunch of times and rotated it and merged everything together and rounded some corners and I have these awesome looking stars that you know I can use on anything I decided to kind of place them randomly around the design to make it look like the designs kind of that it has some shine to it I guess you can say I don't know and I don't even think this design necessarily needs it now that I look at it but it was something that I thought it needed at the time I guess but uh, let me know what you guys think of these I think it definitely adds to it you have to be careful with these though because sometimes it could just make it look like a mr. clean logo or something in less than eight minutes we made this 3d design together I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a comment below and smash that like button. And guys, remember, this stuff takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So practice, practice, practice. But I have faith in you guys that you could do this, okay? My name is Charlie Pingus. I will catch you guys in the next video. Keep creating. Keep being awesome. Peace.